Um, a lot of my students seem to have trouble with this poem, The Fox in the National Museum of Wales. And I, I think, for me, it just makes me think of um, the idea of an element being added into your life uh, that helps you see things fresh and new and in an exciting way. That, and that is what poetry is supposed to do. Poetry, it is said, it refreshes the language, it refreshes our senses, um, cleanses the doors of perception. These are different things that poets have said. In this poem, I think uh, Minhinik is using the idea of walking around a museum in Wales and being able to actually see things because he's inserting this character of the, of the fox, running and touching and moving through things as a way of actually seeing what's there for the first time. So let's work through this. He scans the frames but doesn't stop. This fox who has come to the museum today, his eyes in the Renaissance, and his brush in the Baroque. That brush in the Baroque, that fun alliteration. Um, the time periods are what should strike us, that he's, he, he, he can look at one era and be in another. Between dynasties, his footprints have still to fade. Between the sh and now we move from Europe to China, in only the wondrous way you can in a museum, go from one room to another room, from one era to another era, from one continent to another. Shan and the young, the porcelain atoms shivering at his touch. Ah, lighter than the emperor's breath, drinking rice wine from the bowl, daintier than the eunuch pouring wine. He not only enters China, but it's the language, he changes tone, the poet, he, he adapts to the new references. So here we are in uh, the poetic world of China with the emperor's breath, rice wine, um, dainty eunuchs, pouring wine, servants who um, are gelded and don't have genitals any longer are then seen as these kind of mystic creatures. Ah. Uh, is the, is the signal for me that we're in a poetic, different register. I came as quickly as I could, but already the fox has left the Industrial Revolution behind. His eye has swept the age of atoms, the Taj Mahal within the molecule. So what a wonderful uh, metaphor for the construction of the atom. Uh, there's my horrible drawing of it. What's in the center is the Taj Mahal. So his, his comparisons for things are with art. Art becomes its own referent. But again, the time eras are changing and he's moving really quickly because this character, the speaker, doesn't want the fox to get up to no good. Now watch all the alliteration and the fun. And this is a stanza that really shows you this is just a fun poem. The foxes and the fossils and the folios I cry. The foxes and the photography and the folk studies department. The foxes and the fo flux and the foyer. The foxes and the flock. The foxes and the flock. Danger. The fox being in the flock might mean death to chickens. Sorry to be trite, but it does. Fossils, folios, photography, folk studies, flux, foyer, flock, flock. It's silly, it's fun, but it also shows you that alliteration can connect very vastly unconnected things in the same way a museum can. Um, here we continue, now the fox sniffs at the dodo, at the door of the Celtic orthography, the grave goods, the chariots, the gods of darkness. He has made their acquaintance on previous occasions. He's been here before. Or maybe it's the speaker that's been here before and looked at these things. Um, but he, he's looking at everything, the birds, um, the ancient burials. He's been dead. Maybe he's been reborn. There beneath the leather-backed turtle. I love the imagery here. The image of this strikes me. And the simile, black as an oil drum. Under the skeleton of the whale, he skedaddles. The verbs emphasize the fun and the movement. The whale, silver as bubble wrap. The comparisons... Are, um, are modern, unusual, and reflect the speaker making connections perhaps he wouldn't have made had the fox not shown up. Maybe he wouldn't really consider these. Um, these things. Maybe it would just be a whale bone, not a whale bone, silver as bubble wrap. 
Also, that silver's bubble wrap makes me think of Andy Warhol. Through the light of Provence moves the fox, through the Ordovician era and the Sumerian summer. So we get this technical language. It reminds me of Wallace Stevens. Um, we have um, the light of Provence, which is in southern France, which is classic. The gray-blue, the brush on him. This one who has seen so much. So this fox is almost a magical, immortal, all-seeing element that witnesses the art. But then, remember we have the idea he's in the flock. Well, we get this other ominous idea that blood on the bristles of his mouth. We have, again, that alliteration, that image of violence and death. After all, flocks, uh, foxes are dangerous. It's not just fun to be here as well. And on his suit of iron fillings, the air fans like silk. What a beautiful, beautiful image. Um, of delicacy, it contrasts, doesn't it, with the blood and his violence. Through the cubis and the surrealist, these are art movements. This fox, he was skedaddling, now he shimmies. How much better than walking or even trotting? Surreptitiously, secretly, as if he's up to no good. Past the artist who has sawn himself in half under the formaldehyde sky, goes this fox, shiny as a silver fax in his fox coat. So this is Damien Hurst. I think it's Hurst, Hurst, Hurst? I don't know. Sorry, forgive my spelling. Um, he cut, uh, he puts animals in formaldehyde to give them this uh, like modern day statues frozen in a moment. Um, and uh, that's modern art, you know? Not just ancient, but modern, strange art. The fox shiny as a silver fax in his fox coat. You get that repetition of fox. You get the adaptation of fax. Um, it's not exactly what clear what a silver fax would be, but it's to the sound. So the same kind of silliness and innovation, and, and I'm not saying Damien Hirst is silly. He's actually quite a profound artist, but that, that kind of joy and fun he brings to art, same the poet, just with their words, sounds, images. For at a fox trot travels this fox backwards and forwards in the museum. So we get time and artists' movements, and it's not only about moving forward. The fox shows us, as the museum does, if we look carefully, that time doesn't only move forward. It's moving backwards and forwards. Under the bells of Brugmansia that lull the Ecuadorian botanist to sleep, over the gray moss of Iceland, further and further goes this fox, passing the lambs at the feet of Jesus through the tear in Dante's cloak. Now we get religious art. We get geography. So we're covering time periods, uh, uh, biology, geography, everything in only, again, the way a museum can. How long have I legged it after this leisure domain? How long have I followed, legged it, again, slang to uh, run after? How long have I run after this, this thief with light hands, this fox in the labyrinth, he's in a maze. The, the, the museum's a maze. This fox that never hurries. He takes his time, yet passes an age in a footfall. So even though not fast, room to room, room to room is era to era. He goes fast. He's not moving fast, but he goes in a few steps. He passes a whole age. This fox from the forest of the portrait gallery to engineering's cornfield sigh. How long have I chased this guy? Is it about time or is it about space? Look, I'm going to tell you this. I will tell you this. He is something to follow. It's good, this red fellow. What a wonderful description. He keeps varying his language because he's varying his perception. The fox is freshening up the way he sees the world and it's worth following him. This fox I foster, he's the future. This fox I foster, I'm raising him in a, in a way and he's the future. No one else has seen him yet. 
but they are closing the iron doors. This last stanza is different as the, the final few stanza, the last two stanzas are getting smaller. But if no one has seen him yet, what does that indicate? Is this just a fox of the imagination? But if they're closing the iron doors, does that mean they've trapped him, trapped him inside? It's unclear to me in this ending, but I think he wants it to be. There's the tension between the danger and the imagination, between art and nature. Uh, boredom and refreshment of vision. All these things are at play, I would argue, in this poem. And um, it's a poem worth coming back to, really looking at the verbs and the images, but not getting too caught up in what, you know, if you don't immediately grasp it. As with uh, the Ode on a Grace and Perry urn, it might help you to know a little bit about the art and artists mentioned in the poem. Um, but I think this is a poem that really lends itself to just in the enjoyment of reading it. And in that way, I think it is really indebted to a poet like Wallace Stevens.